I saw this video pop up on my on this day that they do where they're like, this is what you posted last year at this time. And it's actually embarrassing. Like it's actually embarrassing how cringe it was that I was like completely falling for their BS. But the reason why I wanted to share this, despite how cringe and embarrassing this is, is I just wanted to use it as an example to invite you if you haven't changed and open your eyes to what's happening in Palestine, to what's happening in Lebanon, to what they're about to try to do in Iran, to understand that it's not weakness to change. To admit that you are wrong or uneducated or uninformed or ignorant about something is not weakness. It is important to grow. We shouldn't know everything or think we know everything or be stagnant in our beliefs our entire lives. Being so stubborn and inflexible that you're unwilling to change when provided with new information and perspectives is not a flex, it's emotional immaturity. I saw this video because one of the IOF propagandists here that you can see I duetted was doing the put her finger down challenge, which by the way, cringe. Like the memification of it only two weeks after it happened should have been a red flag. And I, in this video, was doing the same thing, being like, well, you know, also Palestinians have been going through the same thing. Because even at the beginning of this, when I was believing all their lies, I still viewed the Palestinians as people and thought what was happening to them as well was awful. But at this time, I was still believing their lies about the resistance. Even at this point, on October 21st of 2023, I was just learning about this. Like, baby infancy. Did not understand. I am human. So when it first happened and I started seeing some of the footage come out that they were showing on the news, I was horrified. And every outlet I was watching after that, whether it was independent media or mainstream media, and that goes actually for my whole life on coverage of this, was reporting on what happened in such a way that was filled with lies and misinformation and one-sided bias and propaganda. And yes, at first I believed them. I know, embarrassing. Did not understand the IOF, did not understand the history of the country, did not understand the importance of the resistance. Like this was my very, 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 very beginning of becoming pro-Palestine. Because obviously once I understood the truth about what was really happening, I would never have shared something like this. But I didn't delete it. And the reason why I didn't delete it or anything that I put on my Twitter at that time, despite the fact that Zion just will come out and be like, oh yeah? Well, when October 7th first happened, you said that you sympathize with the Israelis. Why'd you change, hmm? You got me. It was because I was put on the payroll of the all-powerful Palestine lobby. Because I learned what really happened and what the truth was, and I adjusted my opinions accordingly. But I leave them up because I want people to know that you can change. You can change if you are seeing this. You can be deprogrammed. You can undo propaganda. You can unlearn things. I don't care how old you are. Because when this first happened and I was so propagandized by the West without even realizing it and so indoctrinated into Islamophobia without even realizing it and so indoctrinated whether I understood it or not or realized it or not into Israeli propaganda. Being told my entire life, they were such a great country. They were a democracy that just lived in a bad neighborhood. They were the only democracy in the Middle East. They were our allies and they existed because they were there to protect protect Jewish people, you see. And guys, reminder that the thing about internalized bias and propaganda is that you're not aware consciously that you have it. Like I never thought about the Israeli regime. I mean, that's part of the problem in the West is that we don't think about foreign policy and how our foreign policy affects the entire globe despite the fact that we're only 5% of the world's population. But my point is the indoctrination was subtle and ubiquitous because if anybody asked me about the Israeli regime, I would repeat all those talking points about how it was a democracy and it was a safe haven for Jewish people without even realizing that I was repeating propaganda. A land for a people with a people without a land and all that other fucking bullshit we've been taught our entire lives. And of course some subconscious indoctrination from the evangelicals which when you actually start thinking about it is insane. And obviously I'm talking here to my fellow white Americans because obviously if you're Palestinian American or Arab American or black American you don't need you already knew. Having my eyes opened about what was really happening in Palestine and who the Israeli regime really are was definitely radicalizing. There's a saying in the recovery rooms that's like, hey, if you're still breathing, you can still get clean and sober. Well, if you're still breathing, you can still change and you can say free Palestine.